Did you see that viral video this week about a dude that went into a volcano? This is the dude! Hey everybody, I'm Trace. Thanks for watching DNews. I'm here with Sam Kosman. This is the guy behind a very popular video on the web right now. Maybe you've seen it. If you haven't, go see it. There's a link in the description. He went 1,200 feet down Mount Marum in yep. Vana Vanuatu. How do you say it? Vanuatu. Vanuatu, yep. an island nation in the South Pacific. Tell us a little bit about being in a volcano. It's hot. Um, okay, <laughs> that was gonna be my first question, so I'll just cross that one off. All right, fair enough. <laughs> um, it's, it's really just unlike anything else I've ever done in my life. It's completely alien landscape, it's totally otherworldly. It's kind of like what I would imagine being on the surface of Mars is, or maybe even seeing the surface of the sun in close range. Just boiling, exploding, um, completely unpredictable, and uh, quite extreme. That's pretty awesome. Are you, are you a scientist? Or like, tell us about your background. How did yeah. you get to do this? So I'm not a scientist. Um, I guess I'm an informal uh, explorer, but my professional trade is an entrepreneur and business person. Um, so I've always been involved in, in adventure companies, and, mm -hmm. and currently I'm working with a company called Zola, X-O-L-A, and we make uh, booking software for adventure companies. So I've always been passionate about adventures. It's something that I've pursued since I was very young uh, on my own time, and eventually there came an opportunity to kind of weave that into my professional life, and so that was uh, a new direction for me. Very cool. Yeah. So are other people going to maybe get to book trips like this? I could go in a volcano? <laughs> That's the idea, yes. So of all the active volcanoes in the world, why did you pick Vanuatu? Well, Vanuatu is located uh, pretty much smack dab in the center of the Ring of Fire in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, so there's more active volcanoes there than anywhere else in the world. And Ambrum, the island that Marum is on, it happens to be one of the most um, active volcanoes. In fact, its most recent uh, ex large explosion was in the 1900s. Um, and it also happens to have one of the few, I think, five or so lava lakes in the world, which is Whoa. essentially a lake of molten lava that is exploding. It's about the size of two football fields, mm -hmm. and uh, it's deep, deep inside the volcano, so it's quite inaccessible, which is why most people haven't gone there, which was yet another allure to being able to go and being among the first to do that. We take a chopper to go to uh, the island. It lands in the ash plain, and then you climb up to the top of the rim and descend in once the weather window hits. Mm -hmm. um, and when you get to the top, you can actually put your hands over the edge and feel the heat just blistering up. It's almost as if you're holding your hands in front of a campfire, and that's 1,200 feet above the actual fiery pit. So, how much training did you have to do? Did you have to like go and try, did you have to stand in saunas? Or like how, <laughs> what other things did you have to do before you could do something yeah. that's extreme? So I would say that the biggest <clears throat> prerequisite really had more to do with kind of the climbing aspect of it. And I've done some climbing in the past, so that was good. Uh, in terms of just dealing with the heat, that was completely unknown to me. Uh, I happened to be with a couple of other more professional uh, adventurers and, and filmmakers who have been in volcanoes before. In fact, my partner and the person that I descended in with was uh, a, name, a guy named George Karunas. He happened to have gotten married at the top of a nearby volcano cool. two years prior. So yeah. he kind of knows the ropes when it comes to vol volcanology and, and volcano uh, business. Mm -hmm. So he gave me the, um, the lowdown and, and pretty much just made the descent without a whole lot of, of uh, preliminary training. Once you got down there, how long did you stay by that lava pool? Once we descended, and it takes a couple of hours to get in, um, you know, the, the fire is exploding in all directions and you can approach it to within about 20 meters or so, so you're, you're very close. Um, getting that close, you can really only stand for a couple of seconds, even with the protective gear that we had on, mm -hmm. which is a heat suit that uh, allows you to stand closer without your skin melting off, essentially. Um, our cameras didn't have the good fortune of, of being as protected. They actually melted to some extent, uh, as did some of the other gear. The other piece of equipment that we have that was absolutely essential from the get-go, I mean, from the second that you descend into the actual volcano, is a gas mask. Yeah. Um, there's a constant swirl of uh, chlorine and, and sulfur dioxide that's just moving around the air that's being emitted out of the volcano and uh, even just one breath of that superheated gas can kill you. Do you know the temperature that it was? Like just ambient temperature near the, the lava lake? Yeah, I would say that the ambient temperature is probably in excess of 110 degrees probably. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you could put your hand over and a breeze can come with that superheated gas that could be into the hundreds. Uh, we mm -hmm. were standing there on a couple of occasions and you know, the, the lava just burps and uh, it goes into the air, it cools as it's coming down, hits you on the helm, it burns your clothes. It landed very close to us on a couple of occasions. These big lava bombs are about the size of your fist. 
and we had a laser thermometer to get a sense of how hot it was. That was in the video. And I that saw was that. in the video. So it was it was roughly 600 degrees, and and some of the ones Jeez. you know don't cool quite as fast. So they're yeah. even hotter than you that. You guys grabbed it, right? Yeah, we in the did. Video? Right, with leather gloves, it smells like a steak burning in your hand. Mm, yeah. No, no, thank you. That's so, <laughs> it sounds crazy. Um, one of our other hosts, Ross Everett from the new show. Uh -huh. He was like, why didn't he take any marshmallows? <laughs> I yeah. had every intention of stopping at the grocery store and finding a bag of uh, marshmallows, but I guess. The Nivon, the Vanuatu people don't appreciate s'mores as much as we do, <laughs> so I couldn't find any. Yeah. Uh, but perhaps that's uh, that's for round two. Sam, thanks a lot for coming. Where can people find you if they're more interested in Zola? Just go to Zola.com, X-O-L-A.com. Look forward to hearing from you. That's pretty awesome. So what's the next adventure? So for me, I'd say uh, the next adventure is twofold. Um, number one, uh, this was such an inspiring experience for me personally, and there's been such an overwhelming response of, of others who have appreciated being able to see this for the first time uh, and have the desire to go on it, that the next adventure for me is figuring that out. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working with Jeff, the pioneer, who was the first to descend into this volcano, and a team uh, of others, as well as my company, Zola, XOLA, to make that happen. And there will be other adventures that are of equal grandeur coming down the pike, but you'll have to stay tuned for those. For sure. I'll, I'll have to sign up because I, now I want to go to a volcano. <laughs> I, I don't know. Sounds awesome. D News people, if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below, and we will see if we can answer them about volcanoes and adventures. Thanks for watching D News. We'll see you next time.